Aye, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, too, am looking forward to this important hearing. I, too, am expecting that if you and I are still serving here on the dais in 10 years, we will still be holding hearings on some portions of this. I base that on a hearing we had just a week ago in which we recognized that halfway through a contract that saved the American people through its government huge amounts of money if we implemented new contracts the GSA had negotiated for telecommunications, ones that offered higher internet speeds, uh, better telecommunication, better redundancy, and new features were not implemented even though they would save money because, of course, bureaucrats move slowly. So today, as we hear about cost savings, I will not yawn, I will not pretend to be disinterested, but I will not be a true believer from the dais that cost savings will drive this move to cloud computing. I will be particularly interested in details as to how companies believe that they can implement guaranteed security in a cloud environment. As all of you know, we do not guarantee security. We have breaches every week, every month, sometimes every day in government. And even here in the Capitol, the Chinese mainland government has repeatedly breached and taken or confidential, not classified, but confidential information from the House. They regularly are able to penetrate our security. So as we look to the Internet through a web browser, we need to do better, not just as good as we are doing here today. Often said, history does not always repeat itself, but it very often rhymes. Today, as we start looking at cloud computing, at my age, I find that it's rhyming rather humorously. When I began uh, my career, we were still using NCR 500s. We would put as many of those card reading computers in as close as we could to the source, and they would run the cards back and forth distributing to us uh, punching machines so that we could prepare our jobs and then go to that massive and expensive product and have it run. By the time I was a young officer, I was running a, uh, a deck facility with PDP 1145s and deck 10s. Wonderful computers that could multitask, that could have multiple clients at one time, that could load share and balance, that could distribute priorities of who needed what when but yet it was still we sending to the big machine and the machine deciding what we would get when. As we look at the cloud, there is no question that we can look at the cloud as thousands, millions of computing devices available to us to load share. Or in the rhyming way, we can look at it as simply deja vu all over again. In fact, the cloud in any configuration is nothing but a return to those DEC 10 machines. You can have different sizes, you can have dual processors, you can share multiple across. We once had 14 PDP 11s all deciding with one, one central uh, arbitrator who got what load when for what computing in order to keep us in real time. All of this has been done before, but near, not nearly at the scale it's being done. And in my case, all of my previous history in the military was a closed system an extremely closed system. Today we're going to talk about an open system, one in which encryption over a public line is our guarantee and our only guarantee that the data flowing back and forth will remain in the hands of those that it came from and is intended to go back to. I look forward to hearing how we can and should implement both public and often private cloud computing systems, how the government can once and for all recognize that owning a computer is not as important as owning computer power time, something that 30 or 40 years ago everybody understood that owning time on a computer was what you did, not in fact owning a computer. But weaning the federal government off of the idea that they have endless arrays of PCs and servers all within a server room that they can walk to will take time and will take initiative by this committee. So because this is a government-wide problem, we believe, the chairman and I, that this is a government oversight solution that must be pushed through day after day, Congress after Congress. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my